the Kyle Lowry piece. He's been the third best player for the Sixers in the entire series because of the 18-point performance in the second quarter that he gave them in uh, game one, game two. He had 18 points in the th- game overall, one. Yeah, game, one. game one, and he played really well. And he's just been consistently I, I'm just playing good basketball, le- averaging 11 right now, not turning the basketball over. He had a big three last night in the third quarter where they made their nine in mm-hmm. the frame, and he's just been playing some good basketball. I thought his shot was big, too, pick and roll with Embiid. DiVincenzo went with Hartenstein on Embiid late in the fourth quarter. Kyle hesitated just enough. Picked up his dribble, but ball faked, and then knocked down that 15-foot jumper to make that basket to basically essentially lock in the game. He's been playing really well. He had that big corner three, too. Real big. Is that that the fourth quarter or the one I'm talking about in the third? It was in the second half. I thought it was the third. They all blend together at a certain (laughs) point. I will say, though, like outside of of that, even more than the offense, and he's been one of their more consistent offense players, especially given the lift he gave you in game one. Just the defense. Like it feels like every time they put the ball on the floor, his hands are there. He's making that that driving lane tough to get through. Uh, he's stripping a lot of, of of. They're not getting all the loose balls, but he's stripping a lot of ball handlers. He's been playing really, really pesky, annoying. He'd piss me off if I was playing against some kind of defense, and I appreciate that because they don't really have anyone else who does that. Yeah, and that's what look, makes him valuable as a screener. He's look. He's almost always if he's not the smallest guy on the floor he's very close or at least shortest Shortest, guy on the floor i I shouldn't call him small because he's he's pretty stocky right but we'll go with that i I talked about this exact thing with him in the locker room last night about you know how do you affect how are how can you make an impact as a screener as a guy who's you know six feet tall and he goes you have to be willing to sell out you have to give up your body and say I'm going to do whatever it takes to try to, you know, guys coming around me, he is not going to be able to track whoever I'm screening for. And the flip side of it is Lowry says the screener most times is the guy who ends up being open. And so on some of those plays where he's setting either the first or second screen on the double drag, he's then relocating. And as they're doubling Joel or they're doubling Tyrese and and they're kind of stuck between worlds on those sets, Kyle on the wing or in the corner is the beneficiary of doing the the gritty, the tough work, and throwing a shoulder into somebody's midsection. And so I think he understands as well as anybody on this team that the accumulation of, of physicality is, is super useful in a playoff game where by the end of 48 minutes, no matter how well conditioned you are, no matter how healthy you are, a lot of these guys are going to be really tired. And it's, it's about making sure from minute one to minute 48 that they are feeling you in some way so i i have a a great appreciation for what he's brought to this team he also took a big charge in the second half Mm -hmm. as well and that's again that's what he does 